to accommodate hundreds of passengers at the seating. The comfort with, I mean, here you can charge your phone, you can, there's AC and all of that. Things you cannot get when you use public buses. So you realize that if you look at the comfort and all of that, this is better. I mean, going interstate from Lagos to Ibadan or Abeokuta or any other states, this is, this is better now. It's like a clear sign that my parents' taxes have been working. This is a game changer in many respects. And uh, it is a pity that uh, we don't always look at those things that we should be proud of. Rather, we look at ch our challenges. We don't look at our achievements. This is a huge achievement for every Nigerian. And every Nigerian should be proud to be part of this. This rail line has 11 stations along the corridor linking Lagos, Ogun and Oyo states. When you compare it, we already have 25 railway bridges. If you look at what we are doing between uh, other countries, maybe they don't, they don't even need any bridge. They don't have cost to build bridges or railways. And then they go by the other way, pass through gorges, uh, deep cutting areas, and all that. And if you have been on that corridor before, you, you know what I'm talking about. Then here we have other facilities. Yes, uh, the corridor is furnished with 33 kV electrical power supply system. We have the signaling that is. Uh, not available in most other uh, African projects. That is a full automatic signaling system, GSM uh, communication system. These are the modern facilities in railway science. Okay, and then we have numbers of freight yards on this line. Then it's complemented by maintenance facilities in two, three places, just between these 162 kilometers. Okay, we have locomotive maintenance, depot for rolling stocks, offices and all that. That are you find in Kajola, you find in Abekuta, you find in Nevada. And in Lagos. It has provided a more reliable and comfortable alternative means of transportation for many who avoid the long hours spent on gridlock at the Ibadan Expressway. And the traffic is always very serious, it's always terrible. You can spend three, four hours on the road. This one, I, I have planned myself. We left Lagos at eight o'clock. I already planned at 10.30, I'm gonna be here, and it, I got there exactly 10.30. So you can plan your journey while even using the train. I think it's a very awesome experience using the train. Very nice experience, I like it. The timing is good, the comfort in the cabins are good. The temperature, everything about it is very good. We're impressed. The rail projects have probably been on in the last 30 something years you know trying to modernize trying to revive it is something that has probably been on in more than 15 years but this particular administration has prioritized infrastructure and prioritizing that road rail it's part of it which is under the transport sector. So the rail is something that they've been committed to and Federal Ministry of Transportation has actually um, received budgetary release in 100% for every rail project. Passengers' patronage continue to increase at the Itapwe to Wari rail line. I feel so excited. What I uh, see outside the country is now in my country. It will turn the economy around for the better. Because before now, we used to see train services as rocket science. This is practical. We are seeing it live. It's no longer on paper, it is now real. It's working, it's functional. We pray that the functionality will be sustained. Abandoned for about 33 years, the 326 kilometer rail line with 12 modern stations passes through the states of Kogi, Edo, and Delta.
connecting the northern and southern regions of the country. This is a very important landmark achievement of the President Muhammad Buhari led administration. While coming on board, he promised Nigerians that all important Abonjo projects are going to be completed by his administration. This is a very important uh, project that will impact positively on the lives of Nigerians. One, towards, towards transportation and the movement of goods and services. It's a lesson and I believe even the state government should learn from this that when a new administration you are coming in, it is unnecessary for you to start another project. Just pick the ones that are germane and complete it. The same credit will go to you. In fact, people will be happy. Nigeria has not built uh, a railway network for the last uh, century. The, the best attempt was the Itape uh, Wari line. It was built, but never functioned. But today, you find it has been commissioned. It is uh, working for the Nigerian community as a whole. And that rail line also is critical to making a Jakuta steel complex viable. Without the rail, uh, it's just going to be an uphill struggle. It has ever been part of the dreams of President Muhammad Buhari to see that uh, the railway system in Nigeria has been resuscitated and reactivated and uh, been fully put to use. I could remember very well that uh, when he was the chairman of the Petroleum Special Trust Fund, PTF, one of the recognized projects for intervention was the railway. In 2016, Nigeria's first standard gauge rail line commenced operations. The 187-kilometer project is constantly being upgraded. More coaches were added and electronic ticketing introduced to make traveling easier for passengers. In Abuja Kaduna, we have a total of 17 coaches and they are split into two. One, is, one train is based at Rigasa, it originates from Rigasa every morning and that one has uh, uh, eight coaches. While the one that is based, the second one that is based in Idu, that originates from Idu every morning, is made up of nine coaches. Now, these 17 coaches put together, their total carrying capacity, that is, the number of passengers multiplied by the eight trips they all do in a day, will give you, fi give you 5,344 passengers. That is the total carrying capacity. Assuming we are carrying full passengers for the eight trips we do in a day. Sitting capacity, I mean. I can recall vividly the first day we rolled out this service on the city of Abuja. It was really a beauty to behold. Nigerians have come to embrace the rail transportation system. Right now, I can say from when we started in 2016 to now, we have carried nothing less than 2.5 million Nigerians on this corridor. And more have been promised for Nigerians on this corridor. I've used the railway system for some time now, and I can boldly say that instead of using road transportation, I would prefer using the railway system has really reduced a lot of stress for me. I now go to my home early and it's so convenient. It's, it's less expensive and so good. It has been so wonderful. It's really reduced the cost for my transportation to office every day. It's really fantastic. I really enjoy it. Actually, it's only some few times that I will follow the road, maybe due to one or two reasons. The development has been quite huge and thunderous and I think by the time I hope this administration you know finishes up and finishes up well we will now sit down and calculate in terms of mileage covered in the development of infrastructure you will find that we can end up giving them some good mark but even now the opening up of the system, the ecosystem of trade and environment is a good thing. However, in 2021 and 2022, six months apart, 
the Abuja to Kaduna train that was already witnessing massive patronage suffered a setback. October 2021, the train was bombed by bandits. Luckily, no life was lost, but the trucks and locomotives were damaged. From the from region, immediately we just reached kilometer 137.5. We just had we just had an explosion. The first explosion was from the left, the second one from the right. So we and then from there when we received the explosion, we we're trying to make some things. How do we as in dodge? Because since we did not know where they are coming from, after some couple of minutes we are moving, the next thing we now started seeing a gunshot from the overhead bridge, which we could not be able to see those people that were there. The next thing me and my colleague will lie down, will lie down on the floor, continue how do we manage to as in we think very fast and talk with each other, how do we manage to clear ourselves there and the passengers we've been taking. So we decide from there now we continue moving gradually. God help us with the God uh, power, the nation. Our, we'll be able to clear the spot up to 12.5 uh, kilometers. That is when the system, the local national, and due to the damage to the tank because the whole default got uh, finished. We keep on operating without allowing the train to stop because we now think if the train will stop at that very moment, it will have been kind of uh, horrible because. Uh, for the lives we are carrying and our own lives too. So, but God Almighty have saved us. We indeed grateful. Six months later, in March 2022, there was another blast that claimed the lives of about nine people on board, with several others kidnapped. They started shooting sporadically from all angles and they put the gun in a rapid mode you know so that uh, really inculcated fear and i could see when bullets was penetrating from the body of the train i saw holes and the whole train was so smart you know i could perceive the something of the bullet in trying to move my leg it was on the floor with shoe, the bullet penetrated the door, uh, the body penetrated one of my seams of one of my fingers. It's completely open. Hmm. To prevent reoccurrence and secure the project, federal government is providing digital security network and 24-hour surveillance along the tracks and the trains in the Abuja to Kaduna rail and other rail projects across the country. We've spoken with the Nigerian Air Force. The Nigerian Air Force used to escort the plane. The president has approved that we should employ people who will be working on the track for the next six, seven months, within which we should have been able to install the equipment. So we intend to employ villagers that will be working on the track. If they see any, if there's anything they suspect, they should let us know so that we can let the security know and the, the security will move in. All that, all these are measures we will take until we install the security equipment. Uh, immediately they happen, we deploy our men and uh, succeeded in installing the truck and also moving the 11 coaches that were affected by the attack and the other three coaches that they did that was coming for relief. So we have moved them to workshop, we have examined them, we are now preparing on how to freeze those coaches and on the resumption of train service. We are trying to see how we can come back, give confidence to the people, and at the same time, the security and the federal government are doing their ultimate best to see how those heads in captivity can be released. In spite of these distractions, federal government says it is determined to connect the entire country by rail. The current government is committed to improving our infrastructure. And truly, they've shown that they understand the connection between infrastructure, our availability of infrastructure, and economic development. Um, infrastructure itself is a catalyst for growth. All over the world, countries that have a strong economic growth invest on railways. So it is only fair, so it is only right that uh, Nigeria makes this choice because this is the choice that will sustain Nigerian 
economic development. I'm glad and the nation uh, that the railway system is being revitalized. That for me is very important. I grew up with railways. Railways have been part of my life everywhere I go. And so I'm very happy to see the project taking off. It's critical to development, to culture, to productivity. Work is ongoing at the Kanu to Kaduna rail line project, a double track standard gauge rail. A lot of clearing has been done. Um, the little challenges we had on a few kilometers of uh, right of way acquisition has been reserved. Um, you saw a number of bridges and coverts mm -hmm. being done. Mm -hmm. We are working with a work plan for 18 months and um, CCCC and also the supervising um, engineering company team knows that it's 18 months that that segment of the project must be delivered and hopefully if we get um, more funding from the appropriation and also the loan kicking in it's something that we know will be delivered the reconstruction and rehabilitation work for the narrow gauge put Harkat to meiduguri is on and expected to reach Inugu State before the end of 2022. Trust are awarded for, at the beginning of the seaport. The Portacot Meduguri starts from Bonny with a new seaport in Bonny, but connected to a next seaport, connected to the Portacot seaport, they are all connected. You can't sell. That's the directive of the president because you know most Nigerians think that railway is for uh, passenger transportation. No, it's movement of cargoes to create and grow the economy. It is basically to move goods and services, the ones you, 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 you want to export as a result of production or the ones you're bringing in as a result of importation. So there, there's none. The uh, Itabe Wari is connected to the, to the seaport. We have to build a new seaport in Wari, which will link the central line. The central line starts from Abuja, Baru, to Itabe, to Lokoja, and then to Alaja, where the current one ends, and then con connection with the new seaport. The project estimated to cost about three billion dollars will connect states in the eastern and northern parts of the country this project uh, is going to bring a lot of development to the agro processing uh, sector of the economy it is going to further link uh, nigeria and the rest of west africa in the future the most important part of it is that it will inculcate the feeling of ownership by the local communities because of the agricultural developments that will be done along the corridor. There's going to be a lot of agro-processing which will lead to exports and also local consumption. What we hope this project will do is further open up Nigeria to importers, exporters, manufacturers and processors in the agro-allied industry and much more. Not resting on its oars, more projects are still being carried out by the federal government. Work for the $11 billion Lagos to Calabar will soon commence as contract for the construction has been awarded already. Remember that that is a huge project. Um, it goes from Lagos to the whole of the coastal, coastal states. And it's a project that because of the terrain, we'll be looking for $11.1 billion. If the funds kick in, then of course we'll begin to um, progress on that. We're working with the aim of delivery and we're not going to shift our focus. It is the stated goal of President Muhammad Bahari to link all the state capitals with railway. By doing that, you establish an efficient means of uh, exchanging goods and services across the country. Apart from that, it opens up the possibility of exporting a lot of our natural resources. These projects have brought improvement in the socio-economic conditions of Nigerians. We thank God because we are still moving small, small. 
we are moving forward madam, 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 because madam, before we are entering sun yeah. here and there, but now we have seen a place to sit. Besides making traveling easier, it has reduced the pressure on the roads with the commencement of freight services at the Itape, Wari and Lagos to Ibadan rail lines. For years now, we have been passing through PEMS, more especially on the area of conveying our goods from the seaport, even in times of bringing our goods from northern states to the south, it has been an issue, it has been a very big challenge. The traders in Nigeria will no, no longer have challenge of issue of delayed in our goods in times of offloading our goods from the wharf, taking days or weeks. It has become a theme of pass. We are believing that by the God's special grace, by the time our goods arrive to the seaport, in the next one or two days, at least the train should convey our goods to our various states. We have to float our goods and uh, do our normal businesses, unlike before, where the container will leave a Papa Seaport only to arrive to Lagos, I mean, uh, Port Harcourt and other states in south, south or southeast. It will take days. We are negotiating with Dangote to move cement from both of the Aukmila factory and Obagina factory. It's at the peak now. We have uh, over 150 wagons that we can deploy for the cement movement. We will have warehouses they can also lease and use. So we are discussing that one seriously. Uh, luckily enough, the Lagos uh, the, the the problem between Apapa and the port has been resolved. The first soft formation has been fixed and we can now get up to uh, ANL. So the, and also luckily enough, the X-ray machine at uh, APMT, the container has been shifted and the contractor is now working with the, within the APMT, which means sooner than later, or maybe in the next two months, they will complete the track entirely into the port and we'll be able to move both container and uh, other goods out of the port on the standard gauge. Movement of goods and services have been guaranteed now by this particular infrastructure development. And this is what boosts the economy. If you have your if you have production, if you have the goods that are produced and you do not have means of moving them across, then that's a big problem. The rail system is the only alternative to Nigerian economy. For example, moving the heavy equipment from south to north, east and all of that. Even recently they've engaged them in a, I mean, a, um, a product, oil products. So that will give us a long way in easing and quenching the fence of the haphazard economy that we are running. The rehabilitation of the rail line has created hundreds of jobs and local economy boosted along the corridors. We have employed over, over 5,000 direct on NRC, but on the construction site, I think they have done over 15,000 of uh, both professional, technical and uh, labor. So with this, the other side come, uh, takes off, I think more people will, will be recruited and will be emphasizing local content. Conventional locomotives are being maintained 100% by Nigerians. And I keep saying it, from 26 July 2016, when we started these operations, Nigerians have been in charge. I have been in charge of this project. What Chinese did for three years was to provide technical support to us. And it has ended since 2019. Training and maintenance are given considerations with ongoing construction of the wagon assembly plants at Kajola, Ogun State, and the University of Transportation in Daura, Katsina State. They said it's many seven buildings, and that those seven buildings should be ready before September. I've asked the palm sector to invite them for a meeting so that this school can start uh, functioning from September. The coming of this administration in 2015 has seen four massive rail projects completed and many more projects ongoing. Feats already been described 
has unprecedented achievements that will revolutionize the transportation system.